Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, I'll be reviewing the Abcancore CT406W Dual Spectrum CPU Cooler. This cooler is positioned as one of Abcancore's mid-range coolers with RGB fans. This is a tower-based cooler coming with two 120mm fans in a push-pull configuration. I'll be testing, reviewing, and installing this cooler on my standard Ryzen 3600 test bench. Before we get into the specs, the build quality, and the test results, if you're interested in PC component reviews like this one, gaming PC builds, or home lab server content, get subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon below this video to make sure that you get future video notifications. I'll be linking out to the Abkin Core CT406W Dual Spectrum CPU Cooler in the description below, so definitely check that out as well. The CT406W Cooler features a single tower with four direct touch heat pipes running through the base or the cold plate of the heatsink. Instead of going with hugely wide cooling fins, the CT406W opts for a dual 120mm fan configuration and push-pull. The included fans feature a 4-pin PWM connection, which is definitely nice to see. They're rated for a maximum airflow of 74.85 CFM, 36 dBA each. This is quite a bit for a CPU cooler in the $30 to $40 range, and it's also quite interesting to see two of these fans included. The fans have a minimum speed of 800 RPM, but are able to spin all the way up to 1800 RPM to hit that 74.85 CFM number. This cooler is compatible with all of the previous Intel-based 11.5X sockets, as well as the new LGA1200 boards for the 10th gen Intel CPUs. On the AMD side, this cooler is pretty much supported on almost everything. The compatibility matrix lists the AM2 socket and above, so pretty much anything recent and even the old stuff. I expect though that the target audience really is AMD AM4 Ryzen owners. Now that we know a little bit more about this cooler, let's take a look at how it performs in the benchmarks. I'll be using my Ryzen 3600 test bench to evaluate the performance. First, we'll take a look at ASUS's ROG RealBench stress test. For reference, the overclock settings that I'll be using for this video are 1.4 volts V-Core with an LLC setting set to high on my ASUS X470 Gaming Plus motherboard. All tests have the CPU fans running at 100% to see the best performance possible. So let's take a look at the stock testing. The stock CPU test with the CT406W installed was able to keep the average maximum temperature down to 66.9C with the CPU voltage settings set to auto. During the test, the CPU was able to hit a maximum boost clock of about 4 GHz. With the overclock settings applied, the average maximum temperature was about 69.6C. Since there are way too many games out there to benchmark, I'll be using the 3D TimeSpy benchmark as a stand-in for the gaming test. Stock settings, the CT406W kept the Ryzen 3600 at a maximum average temperature of 69.9C, while allowing the average boost clock speed to hit 3.8 GHz. With the overclock settings applied, the average maximum CPU temp rose by about 2.2C up to 72.1C. For my CPU encoding test, I re-encode my older Ryzen 2600X video from X264 into H265 with the handbrake 1080p high preset. Stock cooler was able to keep the max average temp to about 66C which allowed for a maximum average boost clock of 4 GHz. With the overclock and overvoltage settings applied, the CPU hit about 71.6C. Moving on to the ADA64 CPU stress testing, stock configuration hit a peak average of about 65.3C, while auto-boosting all the way up to 4 GHz, which is pretty good for a cooler in this price range. The overclock test, we saw a rise of about 4.2C up to 69.5C. 
And the final temperature test for this CPU cooler, we'll be running the Ryzen 3600 through about 15 minutes of Prime 95 using the small FFT high heat torture test. With the stock CPU settings, the maximum average temperatures were only about 62.4 C, but the max boost clock was 3.8 to 3.82 gigahertz. After applying overclock and overvoltage settings of 1.4 volts V-Core and high LLC, then rerunning the test, the average max temps were about 85.3 C. In terms of the build quality, the CT406W is a pretty solid cooler. The cooler utilizes the tried and true clip style mounting system for simple installation on an AMD platform. The CT406W dual sync comes in at a total length of 128 millimeters, a width of 100 millimeters, and a total height of 158 millimeters. The CT406 had proved to be a pretty competitive cooler performance wise because this is really meant to be in a $35 to $40 price range. The cooler allowed for nearly the maximum automatic boost clocks on my CPU, which is great for this price range. The fans do get a touch loud at 100% speed, but they are by no means obnoxious. The fans can be tuned using your motherboard's built-in fan profiling software, either in the BIOS or in Windows. I would probably recommend leaving the fans set to auto on your motherboard if you're not going to be overclocking. If you are going to be overclocking, I would probably test out 50 and 75% for your overclock settings and see how the temperatures are and what your noise tolerance is. If you need an extra couple of degrees to get those last 20 to 50 megahertz, I'd say go ahead and ramp them all the way up to 100%. Considering the current pricing on Amazon for this cooler comes in at $37.99, if you like the white frame and the RGB color combination, you're going to be hard pressed to find a better performing CPU cooler in this price range. I would have no problems recommending this cooler to anyone that liked the design, even if you planned on some moderate overclocking. I'll be linking out to the Abkin Core CT406W cooler and the rest of the build parts in the description below, as well as the manufacturing specifications, so definitely check that out. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments section. I create gaming PC and home lab tech videos every week, so if this kind of stuff interests you, definitely get subscribed to the channel. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter, at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook, at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or on the website, samstechstuff.com.